Bend the knee. Fallon Mogolis, everybody. This is Don Willie back again for another edition of Epic, Epic Battles, Battles of Ice, Ice and Fire. And, Fire. and today I'm back here in King's Landing to bring you another contest, which I'm pretty sure many people would have loved to have seen had it not been for some of the more tragic events of our story. So, let me introduce the combatants. In this corner, we have the Wild Wolf, the man who would have been the Warden of the North, who would have went on to marry Catelyn Stark and possibly would have had many great years of ruling and battling the wildlings and who knows what else. But unfortunately, he made the fateful decision to go to King's Landing to attempt to free his sister and was burned by the Mad King. It is Ned Stark's older and very impetuous brother, Brandon Stark. Versus, in this corner, the Prince of Dragonstone, the man known as the Last Dragon, and no, I'm not talking about Bruce Leroy. He is a guy who was loved by many, except if those people happen to be very close to Robert Baratheon. And he is somebody who unfortunately was a tragic figure from the story. And the more and more that we learn about him, the more tragic his story actually becomes. So let us give it up for Prince Rhaegar Targaryen. And today I have Aziz from History of Westeros to help me out. And we're gonna break this one all the way down to find out who would come out on top in this epic struggle that never was. So Aziz, take it away. Brandon Stark, eldest son of Rickard Stark and a natural warrior, man who loved to fight like a gym rat. He was like a sword rat, just practiced all the time, loved the sound of swords, loved to sword fight, loved to ride experienced writer, brave. He obviously, as we know, most infamous incident was him challenging Rhaegar to a duel. If only we could have seen that duel for real, then we would know the real answer here. But I love the idea of it because it was so close to actually happening. And Brandon has a lot in common with someone Rhaegar did fight, Robert Baratheon, because he was a passionate warrior, an aggressive warrior, someone who didn't really think about harm to himself very single-minded, as Rickard said, and Ned reminded us, Bran Stark had the wolf blood. And I don't think anyone wants to face someone with the wolf blood in a one-on-one -on -one duel, even if you're Rhaegar Targaryen. Nah, but maybe, we'll see. Brandon is one of these interesting characters who's trained in both Northern and Southern fighting styles. As we know, his father, Rickard, wanted to move the Starks more into Southern politics, and that involved arranging marriages, with Southern Lords, and that also meant training his kids in how to behave like Southerners, how to act like Southerners, how to fight like Southerners. But that doesn't mean he didn't learn how to fight like a Northerner too. He grew up with the Riswells and Dustins learning how to ride horses. And just like he was in love with swords, he was in love with horses. I imagine he fights with a long sword. His armaments apart from the long sword, I'm not clear on. I would imagine he would still dress like a northerner, although he might have a bit of a southern bent to it, maybe a few more pieces of armor here and there, maybe, because the knights are a little more heavily armored than the northern warriors, I think. So I think he would maybe be a little bit more protected than a lot of the northern fighters, but maybe not quite as heavily armored as a lot of the southern guys. Maybe a kind of a bit of a hybrid, maybe some of the best of both worlds, but maybe a little uh, a little bit of weaknesses there too, maybe, but I'll talk about that in a minute. There's more strengths to go through. With such a high scale upbringing, you've got the best training possible in the North. I mean, these are the Starks we're talking about. He's trained with, maybe it was Sir Roderick. Roderick's an old enough man, and we saw how good a job Roderick did teaching guys like Jon Snow, Rob Stark, and Ned himself had a fight. And Ned certainly took out some pretty major people of his own. And Ned says that Brandon was a significantly better fighter than himself. So that tells you something. Now, as far as weaknesses, well, he's got a few. The temper, the hot-headedness, that can work for him in some cases. It'll probably you know, scare some of his opponents to be terrified of a man that's that, you know, 
passionate and dangerous. On the other hand, someone who's cold calculating, maybe more used to fighting, maybe not as intimidated easily, might be able to use that to his advantage and say, hey, let Brandon overextend himself. Maybe he'll go too far, maybe he'll overreach, maybe I can find an opening there. But maybe that's what Rhaegar was thinking when he faced Robert, and that didn't work out for him. So, mm, it's a tough call. I like Brandon a lot in this fight, but you know, this is Rhaegar we're talking about. So it's a, it's a tough one. Rhaegar Targaryen, the crown prince of Dragonstone. This is the guy who defeated every single opponent that he faced at the Tourney of Heron Hall. And had it not been for Robert Baratheon crushing his chest with that war hammer, we probably would have a much different story. Now, listen, let's look at the man's strengths. He was a skilled warrior who won practically every battle during Robert's Rebellion. And also, you know, he's the guy who, after years of kind of being, you know, the Westerosi version of a nerd, he one day read something in a book and put down the books and said, you know what? It's time for me to pick up the sword. And all of the knights who were around him at the time, you know, who grew up with him, the guys who became his close buddies in the King's Guard, guys like Arthur Dane, and most notably Sir Barristan Selmy, talked about how fine of a warrior he was. Obviously, him being the crown prince, he's going to have the best armor, he's going to have a fine horse. He knows about jousting, obviously, since he knocked everybody off their horse in the list. And while he is a very calculated and a forward-thinking man, I do think that some of his weaknesses happen to be you know, relying too much on prophecy. And that was probably the thing that was kind of getting him killed more than anything was his reliance on the things that were meant to happen. And he's a kind of melancholy guy that was known to be a little sad for much of his life. But people loved Rhaegar. And they loved him not just for the man that he was, but the man that he could have been. And I think that had Brandon and Rhaegar actually faced each other, I think it would have been Rhaegar who would have come out on top. And I think that, you know, just due to the fact that he had such combat skill and the tourney at Heron Hall, I think, proved a lot. And the battles previous to the Trident proved a lot more. Uh, so, yeah, you know what? While I like Brandon, I'm going to go with Rhaegar for this one. So, Aziz, why do you think that Brandon could possibly defeat Rhaegar Targaryen? Well, let me tell you, I think it has a lot to do with the fact that Rhaegar, yes, he was a good warrior, but he's not a natural warrior. Eh, maybe he's a natural warrior, but he's not naturally inclined to be a warrior. You know, Brandon liked to fight. He wanted to fight. He went to practice swords just because he enjoyed it. Rhaegar did it because he had to. That doesn't mean he isn't good at it. But I tend to side with people who are into stuff, you know, who like it, who enjoy it. Like, that makes you good at it. You have a desire to fight and learn all the different tactics, all the different ways sword fight can go, all the different sword strokes, all the different things your opponent can do. Someone who just likes to think about those kind of things, is, that's, that seems like that's going to be a reasonable advantage. And, of course, his fearlessness. I mean, the guy did not... I mean, he challenged... Rhaegar to a duel in front of the King's Guard and the court and everything. I mean, some people call that stupid. I wouldn't argue with that. It is kind of stupid. But it that doesn't have anything to do with his skill in a fight. And, and it definitely shows how brave he was. Even if it was stupid, it was definitely brave. Because you can be both at the same time, in my opinion. And I really wonder how it would have gone if Rhaegar would have fought him or not. But since we don't know, we get to play with it. And I think Brandon, some of his other advantages would be that, well, he has a lot. He actually hates Rhaegar. I mean, if we if we get to include that, I mean, he's got a personal vendetta against the man. Rhaegar doesn't doesn't have any problem with Brandon. There's no personal problem there. He's got no he's got no passion in it. You know, he doesn't want to die. He doesn't want to lose. 
but Brandon's out for something. He is, it's beyond just his himself. He's fighting for his sister, he's fighting for his family, and he's the firstborn Stark, so he takes these responsibilities seriously. So every bit of motivation, every bit of passion, it's all just on his side, that fire, that wolf blood. Brandon may be from the north, but he's got more fire than Rhaegar. You know, and I think that means something in a fight. Well, you know what? Rhaegar was not called the last dragon for no reason. Do not mistake Rhaegar's calm demeanor and think that just because he wasn't the guy who was hooting and hollering at the top of his lungs doesn't mean that he was not a passionate man. This man was willing to risk everything to make this prophecy of the three heads of the dragon come true. I mean, look, he was the guy who went to Summer Hall every year just to remind himself of what he is striving for. He risked the ire of the entire kingdom. His father, the Starks, all of Dorne, just so he could fulfill this prophecy. And though he may not be a natural warrior, that doesn't mean he didn't work at it every single day. This is the guy who, if you remember, he actually unhorsed Brandon at the tourney at Harrenhal. So, yeah, for all of Brandon's bluster, his arrogance, his boastfulness, you know, at the end of the day, it, if it would have come down to the two of these men actually facing each other one-on-one, -on -one, I think that, you know, Ned would have still been the heir to Winterfell and the warden. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if they fought to the death. Maybe you get one of those cases where they both just kill each other and everything would have changed. But another thing about Brandon I really like is, is his tenacity. I think the fact that he's such a, you know, intense guy that he wouldn't feel there's no point at which during a duel if things were starting to go bad for him you know sometimes if you just get the upper hand you lose your confidence you, you know something if your opponent gets the upper hand you start to lose your confidence you can see this guy's stronger than me he's faster than me brand is never gonna have a thought like that he is way too just straightforward he's got blinders on he's not thinking about what could go wrong or oh am i good enough none of that stuff he is just full of confidence he's the firstborn of an ancient house. He's got a big temper, probably got a pretty big ego too. And he obviously wasn't showing any fear of Rhaegar at all. And I don't think that would change even if things started to go bad for him in the duel. So you wouldn't be able to count him out even if Rhaegar got the upper hand. I think he would. there would still be a chance for Brandon to come come back from a bad start. Like if he, Rhaegar got in a few good early shots or if they were, you know, if they started on horseback and, and one of them came off their horse, you know, maybe the other one dismounts so they could continue more honorably. I don't think Brandon would be feeling the pressure. I think he would s stick to his game no matter what. And I think that gives him a nice advantage. I'm not sure that, I'm not sure how Rhaegar would react to, to adversity, but maybe he'd, maybe he'd be around the same. It's hard to say. They're definitely two different personalities. And that means the things that can go wrong in battle, they, they would react differently to. Listen, there are many things that can go wrong in battle. And look, while I do agree that, you know, Brandon is tenacious, that tenacity, that that drive, that uh, kind of, of arrogant bluster can also work against you. You know, look, this was a man who was foolish enough to roll up to the gates of King's Landing to ask, no, not even ask, to demand that the Mad King, the Mad King, send out his son so that he could face him one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, what kind of fool do you have to be to demand from somebody who's been known to just burn people just because, you know, he was like, oh, you know what, my eggs aren't good today. Uh, the chef needs to die. I mean, come on. Uh, I, I don't think it's wise that you go and and decide you're gonna want to battle that man's son and again we're talking about 
Rhaegar Targaryen, the guy who, if you look at his, the events in the story and how people have talked about him, I would imagine that Rhaegar might have been just as good with a sword as Damon Blackfire. I think that, you know, you have a lineage of just good fighters who are out here and even though they may not be all naturals, I mean, you look at Halo Breakspear, you know, you've got the entire Blackfire Civil War. I mean, like, he comes from a lineage of people who are good fighters and who work at it and who are revered for their prowess in battle. And you know what, look, at the end of the day, Robert got a lucky hit. You know, maybe Rhaegar's horse stumbled or whatever. You know, <laughs> Bobby B got him a lucky hit and even still he was, he was wounded. So it's not like Robert Baratheon, you know, walked away from his battle with Rhaegar unscathed. So, I mean, look, I like Brandon, all right? I think what the Mad King did to him was absolutely atrocious. But I don't think the outcome would have been any different for the North as a as a country if he would have fought Rhaegar one on one. You know, Rickard probably would have had to bury his son and say, Hey Ned, I gotta teach you how to how to rule in, in his stead now. Oh no, oh hell yeah, here's uh here's Catelyn. <laughs> so uh yeah, man, uh Look, I think you've made some pretty compelling points for Brandon, but still, at the end of the day, when you when you break it all down from top to bottom, I think that the Targaryens were the ruling family for so long for a very good reason. And I think that the finest ruler of them all, had he had lived, would have been Rhaegar Targaryen. And that, that man was a warrior, and I wish he would have had Blackfire in his hands because had it been in this particular situation, uh, yeah, I think he would have walked out, took two swipes, Brandon would have fell, and that would have been the end of, of that part of the story. I got to agree with Blackfire. If Rhaegar has Blackfire, some Valyrian steel blade, I got to agree. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be rooting. I wouldn't be calling it for Brandon in that case. That's a, that's a big edge. Ah, no pun intended. Okay, pun intended. But one last thing I'll say about Brandon, just to just because the Starks don't go down easily and we got to go down fighting here. Brandon didn't even give up with the noose around his neck, his father being roasted alive and himself slowly strangling to death. That's how bad he wanted it. He, he, he knew he couldn't have it. He knew he couldn't get it. He knew it somehow deep down that he wasn't going to be able to rescue his father. But man, he tried anyway. It got him killed. That's how hard he tried. That's why I got to think there's a chance that even if Rhaegar comes out ahead, he might have he might he might have taken a wound or two that maybe left him permanently wounded. Because even like think of the the Black Knight from Monty Python and the Holy Grail. He cut his leg off. He cut his arm off. He's still going. That's what I think about Brandon. You, he'd be like that guy. In the Princess and the Queen, the uh, the Dustin and the Lord Dustin that, that lost his arm and still took out those high towers. That's what I think about Brandon. He's he, whoever kills the man paid the price along the way. He's not going to get off clean there. He's going to take some wounds at the very least. You know what? I will agree with you that even though I think Rhaegar would win, I do think that Rhaegar would still walk away with some scars. I don't, you know, like. Yeah, I might have uh, overstated Rhaegar's combat prowess, but yeah, you know what? I will have to agree. While I do think that Rhaegar would take it, I think that Rhaegar would have some uh, fresh scars to you know remind him that you know Brandon Stark was not a man to you know just just be trifled with. Uh, I mean, look, we saw what. Brandon did to Littlefinger, but at the same point, Rhaegar is not Peter <laughs> Baelish. So, uh, yeah, it looks like in the battle that uh, would have possibly changed the face of the Seven Kingdoms, how did that actually happen? While I do like Brandon, I do like the Starks, this one is going to go to Rhaegar Targaryen by a 
very thin margin. Yeah, I, I respect that choice. It's, I think it's so close to call that I can't, I can't argue with you there. And I like the uh, comparison to the scar that Littlefinger carried around. That's a pretty good, perfect way to end it. We'll say maybe Rhaegar takes it in a close one, but carries the scar for the rest of his life. And then he gets killed by Robert anyway. I guess not much of a, not much of a life left after that. But hey, this is an alternate reality. Maybe Rhaegar, in this version of things, Rhaegar lived a long and happy life, but he, he carried the Brandon scar for, for that whole time. <laughs> I like it. Oh, man. So, yeah, there you have it, folks. <laughs> Thank you again to Aziz from History of Westeros for helping me out with this one. And... Yeah, this one was another very close call. Uh, we had a hard time kind of hashing this one out, but man, oh man, I think ultimately Rhaegar would have triumphed, and I'm pretty sure most of you will probably agree because, come on, let's face it, who's not a Rhaegar fan, right? <laughs> so, man, uh, not even sure what else to say other than I will see you again for another one of these next week and as always rate comment subscribe share tell your friends come back for more that's been my time and this is don willie saying fellow the